My name is Dr Jess Grackles and I am one of the medical doctors uh, involved in the mechanisms of chronic pain and fatigue study here at Brighton and Sussex Medical School. So this study, Mechanisms of Chronic Pain and Fatigue in Fibromyalgia and ME-CFS, came about a few years ago. I was doing my PhD here at Brighton and Sussex Medical School and I was having conversations with um, Professor Kevin Davis, who is, the, um, who is a clinical academic rheumatologist and the chair in medicine. And we were talking about how we thought there was a relationship between fibromyalgia and autonomic dysfunction, that is abnormalities of the flight and fright nervous system. At the same time, my colleagues in neuroscience were doing some really interesting work into the effects of inflammation on uh, fatigue in otherwise healthy individuals. And so when we heard that Arthritis Research UK was looking to put together a project about pain and fatigue, we thought, well, this is really interesting because um, we would like to explore how chronic pain and fatigue may be influenced by um, irregularities of the flight and fright nervous system and also um, people's responses to inflammation. So we gathered together a group of individuals at Brighton and Sussex Medical School, myself and um, Professor Kevin Davis and also um, Professor Hugo Critchley and Neil Harrison um, and we, we worked together to put in this application to um, Arthritis Research UK which is now versus Arthritis and they gave us money to do this multidisciplinary research. So I'm a, um, a clinical academic liaison psychiatrist, that means I'm interested in the relationship between body and brain and Professor Davis is a clinical academic rheumatologist, so he's interested in rheumatological conditions like fibromyalgia. Okay, so the, um, the research project is, I think, uh, very interesting. It's in two parts because we have two questions. One of the questions is how do abnormalities of the flight and fright nervous system affect pain and fatigue in people with fibromyalgia and ME-CFS? So in that part of the study, patients come uh, to the Royal Sussex County Hospital and they, um, they have done there something called autonomic function tests which involves lying on, on a table and having your heart rate and blood pressure continuously monitored whilst you undertake some tasks like fast breathing, slow breathing, counting backwards, holding something cold and these all test the integrity, integrity of the involuntary nervous system. Um, at various points we measure pain and physical and mental fatigue and then what we do at the end is we get patients into a tilted position so we can see what happens to their heart rate and blood pressure as though they were standing up. So that's the first part of the study and patients or participants taking part will have lots of different uh, heart rate and blood pressure tests. They'll also have tests to determine their pain thresholds and they will also have tests to determine their fatigue. And then um, we also do lots of clinically relevant blood tests of so things like thyroid function, inflammatory markers. The second part of the study is uh, takes place here at the university at the Imaging Sciences Centre and people come to have brain scans um, and when they're having brain scans we also do heart rate and blood pressure measurements, we do um, pain measurements and we, um, we do some uh, bloods related to um, measures of inflammation in the body as well. So it's quite, um, it's quite a commitment but we've got lots of interesting interdisciplinary information so we know about how heart rate and blood pressure is working, we know about how pain and fatigue is working, we also know about inflammation and brain structure and brain activity. So in terms of the study and what we've achieved so far is we have tested about 80 participants, most of them patients, some of them unaffected healthy controls and we have presented some of our initial findings at conferences and what we've noticed is this really interesting relationship between the brain and the body in terms of responses to um, uh, you know, the challenge to the autonomic nervous system and also uh, responses to inflammation. So we have shown that patients, uh, depending on their baseline levels of pain and fatigue, they respond to inflammation in different ways, and that is shown in both um, 
in, in terms of blood tests but also in terms of um, what happens to their heart rate when they stand up and their pain and fatigue levels um, during the experiment. And what we hope is that by identifying these mechanisms that are contributing to pain and fatigue, we will be able to target treatments more effectively in the future and also that the scientific community, doctors and patients, will be better informed about these conditions. So uh, what I'm going to explain now is a little bit about the relationship between fibromyalgia, ME-CFS, hypermobility and something called postural tachycardia syndrome. So we know uh, from research that's been done in the past that um, lots of people who have a diagnosis of either fibromyalgia or ME-CFS in fact have flexible joints. We know that people with flexible joints are more likely to experience abnormalities of the flight and fright nervous symptom, uh, system, for example having an increase in heart rate when they stand up. And we think that this is to do with changes in the body related to having flexible joints and the impact on connective tissue. So what we've been finding is lots of the, um, the patient participants with fibromyalgia ME, and ME-CFS do indeed have um, these abnormalities of the flight and fright nervous system, including postural tachycardia syndrome. And the reason why it's important to establish this is this provides an opportunity for potential treatments, both in terms of medicine and also um, environmental and lifestyle factors. So in terms of the brain and fibromyalgia ME-CFS, I do not think that fibromyalgia or ME-CFS are psychiatric conditions, but I do think there is a relationship between the brain and the body. So every time you experience something in your body, like pain in your knee or pain in your back, that is all to do with how pain signals are processed and represented in the brain. So it's important to look at both what is happening in the brain and what is happening in the body. I also think that um, living with a chronic illness can have effects on um, mood and also anxiety and it's important to think about the whole person when looking at any particular condition. In terms of how the research is progressing, we currently have uh, recruited enough uh, patients with fibromyalgia and ME-CFS. We are still looking to recruit uh, unaffected healthy controls and we also have many other studies happening here at the medical school looking into the relationship between brain and body uh, that we are also recruiting to. So please do get in touch if anyone would like to take part in um, upcoming studies. We have upcoming studies looking at hypermobility and brain function and also in postural tachycardia syndrome and brain fog. In terms of the timeline for the research, we hope that we will have completed all of the scientific aspects of testing by the end of this year and that we will be able to analyse all of the data together and then over the following year to 18 months after that, so bringing us into 2020 and 2021, we will be able to start to present further at um, conferences for, um, for the scientific community, but also at conferences for uh, patients and the public. We hope to publish our findings in high impact journals and also disseminate throughout uh, the wider community. So the question was, what do I think about patient-funded and patient-directed research? I think patients um, often have to advocate for conditions uh, that are poorly understood. I think it's really important to take the patient experience into account when thinking about what research to do and how to get it funded. I think it's fantastic um, that FibroDuck are supporting us with this project. We are also supported by Action for ME. Um, a research charity looking into ME-CFS. All of our applications for grant funding, whoever the funder going forward, we, we take um, patient and public involvement very seriously and where possible we try to get patients actively involved in the research design process. So I, I think patients have a lot to offer us in terms of framing our research and also for providing the rationale and incentives for further funding and hopefully 
as the science improves, we can attract even more funding into personalised treatments for people with these conditions.